Welcome to Lecture 21 of Biology 116, entitled Musculoskeletal System. As we continue our look through the various systems within the human body, we're now going to be focusing on the muscles and how the muscles relate to the entire skeletal system as well. And in order to begin, we first have to understand a basic groundwork for what a muscle truly is. So let's entitle this first introductory flow chart as just muscle. And we'll begin by assigning a basic definition to this word, to this term, to understand what we're working with throughout this lecture. We're going to be constantly referring back to this term, muscle, something you've definitely heard of before, but it's good to lay out exactly what it means here. So we're going to define a muscle as the following. This is going to be a specific tissue that's within the body, but this is what makes it special. It is something that generates, it creates, it produces what we would consider a mechanical force. So let's write this down, a mechanical force. So that's our keyword here, mechanical force. Let me rewrite that. There we go. Mechanical force in response to, and this covers basically what we talked about previously in the last couple of lectures, in response to a message, a signal from the nervous system that we would term a nervous system motor output. So this is a very wordy definition here, but let's break it down briefly. So we're looking at a tissue, so that means a bunch of cells that are highly organized together and specialized and differentiated in order to generate a mechanical force, in order to move, in other words, in response to a nervous system message, something that comes from the nervous system that says, hey, I need this part of the body to move to generate a mechanical force. I'm going to utilize a muscle to do so. And that's our basic working definition. Now, how we do this is very simple. It follows the pathway that we've talked about before. We begin with an afferent message, and this is basically our look at how we do this motor output. We have an afferent message, some sort of sensory message, something from the peripheral, something is going to be sent to a central processor, central processing organ known as the brain. And so that's basically our connection to the nervous system there. So we send this afferent message to the brain. The brain's going to understand it, integrate it, and then respond to it. And how does the brain respond? It responds via an efferent message. An efferent message is always going towards an effector. So the brain will respond with an efferent message. That effector will be a muscle, but specifically the efferent message that's sent by the brain is sent in an attempt to stimulate the muscle, We'll see what this stimulation really means as we move forward in this lecture. And then finally, we end up with exactly what we wanted, which was a motor output. Some sort of action caused by mechanical force due to muscles as a result of an efferent message coming from the brain in response to an afferent message that was interpreted and recognized by our brain. This is basically a summary of three nervous system lectures. Now we're starting to incorporate the use of muscles here. So this is what we're going to be referring to. Keep this in mind as we move forward. And in terms of muscle, what this lecture is going to cover are uh, the three basic types of muscle. And this is going to be in specifically referring to the vertebrates. Because the vertebrates are higher order organisms, it's worth understanding what makes them and thus us special as compared to others. The three types of muscle that we'll look at uh, primarily will be skeletal. And we'll also cover um, a short look at the other two, which would be smooth muscle, and cardiac muscle. But the majority of this first half of the lecture is devoted to understanding this right here, skeletal muscle, and that's what we'll work on and look at as we move further along this lecture.